If everything you shoot handheld kind of looks like this, you're probably wondering what professional sports videographers like myself are doing that you're not. The good news is that it's really not that hard. In fact, you're only three super easy tricks away from shooting steady footage like mine and say goodbye to your tripod forever, just like I did. Hey guys, my name is E. I'm a professional sports videographer and the purpose of my YouTube channel is to give you the tools and knowledge necessary to start your own sports videography career. And today, I want to achieve that by making you a much better handheld shooter. So a little later in this video, we're going to go to a basketball game that I'm going to film completely handheld with no stabilization in the lens or in the camera. And I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. Basically, there's three simple rules to follow. But before we get there, let me start with somewhat of a sports videography hot take. I personally would take a clip that's a little shaky over a clip that's completely steady all day, every day, especially for sports. That's right. I believe that small shakes that are not too jarring or distracting are actually a good thing. They make the content look alive and make the viewers feel like they're in person instead of watching through a screen. That's why reality TV and documentaries are typically filmed handheld and always include a reasonable amount of shakes. So basically what I'm getting at is that you shouldn't obsess over small shakes to the point of filming everything with a gimbal, for example. Instead, you should embrace those shakes and make them part of your style. But the question still remains. How do you go from big shakes like that to reasonable shakes or no shakes at all. Well, let's go to the Pierre Charbonneau Center and find out. Just to be clear, I'm filming this entire basketball game tonight with a Tamron 35 to 150 millimeter lens, which has no stabilization. And I'm also turning off the stabilization in my FX3 camera. So I'll be relying completely on my handheld filming skills tonight with no external help from my equipment whatsoever. The first rule of filming handheld is to keep your elbows tucked in alongside your body at all times. This is going to put your arms in the right position for my next two tips. But more importantly, the closer you keep your camera kit to your body, the less heavy it's going to feel. When you hold your camera like this, your biceps are doing most of the work, but your entire upper body is also helping. But if you hold the camera away from your body, then your forearms are doing all the work. And with a heavier camera kit, it won't take long before your arms start shaking. So basically, the further away from your body the camera is, the heavier it gets and the sooner you'll start those shakes. So keep your elbows tucked in, form roughly a 90 degree angle with your arms and maintain that position as much as possible. The second rule of filming handheld is to keep three points of contact on your camera kit at all times. My first point of contact is my right hand, which is holding the camera grip. My second point of contact is my left hand. I'm actually kind of cheating with this one because I use a small rig side handle on the left side of my camera. But if you don't have a side handle, you can use your left hand to hold the lens. Basically cradle it with your hand, put your hand underneath it and hold the zoom ring with your fingers. I personally use my right hand to zoom. So my right hand tends to switch positions back and forth between the camera grip and the lens. But my third point of contact is not a neck strap like most people or even my face like photographers. No, 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 no. My third point of contact is my stomach. Since I added a V-mount battery to my camera kit, I started using it as my third point of contact by simply resting it on my stomach. Not only does it make my shots more stable, but it also makes my camera kit feels much lighter. And it forces me to keep my camera low, which is the ideal perspective for shooting sports. Because filming from a low perspective makes the players look bigger and more dominant. If your camera kit doesn't include a V-mount battery, you can still use this technique and put the back of your camera against your stomach, but you'll definitely need a monitor on top of your camera to actually see what you're shooting. Otherwise, you can always use a neck strap and make your neck the third point of contact, which is a very effective method as well, by the way. I just happen to find straps annoying. 
Anyway, the last rule of filming handheld before I give you a couple bonus tips is to always move your body and not your limbs. When doing camera movements, most shakes come from moving your arms or your feet. So instead of doing that, what you wanna do is keep your elbows tucked in, keep the camera close or against your body, keep your legs wide, and make all your camera movements with your hips. Turning left and right with your hips and bending your knees slightly when need be is the best and easiest way to follow the action handheld in a perfectly smooth motion. I, I can never die. A few bonus tips before I go. First, shooting at a high frame rate is always useful because that way you can slow down your footage and post, which will slow down the shakes and make them more visually pleasing especially the small ones, like the, the jitters, if you will. And also shooting wider definitely helps. I'm sure you've all been in a situation where you're trying to film with a long lens from the stands and you cannot manage to stay still for even one short second. That's because at a longer focal length, like 200 mil, for example, the slightest camera movement is heavily exaggerated at the other end and looks like an absolute earthquake on screen. But luckily, the opposite is also true. The wider your frame is, the easier it is to be stable. Adding weight to your camera kit is also very helpful because a lighter camera kit will be much more affected by jitters and subtle camera movements. A heavier kit, on the other hand, can absorb most of these jitters and can also use gravity to its advantage when it comes to stability. So a heavier lens, a camera cage, a V-mount battery, a monitor with its own battery, these are all things that will add weight to your kit and ultimately make it more stable. And by the way, pardon me for stating the obvious, but if you have the money for it, investing in a lens and or a camera with image stabilization will obviously help you significantly. On that note, make sure to practice the tips I gave you today the next time you film at a sporting event. Otherwise, if you're really in need of some external stabilization, check out the video on your screen right now to help you pick the right tool for your needs.